This video is sponsored by Picnic Allergy. So, I need an office. I work from home and Ashley works from home too. The place where I used to edit my videos is where she works now. A little over a year ago, I built myself a temporary editing booth when I thought Ashley would return to the office, but that's looking like that's not gonna happen anytime soon. My booth is way too small for the amount of time that I spend in there, and the truth is that there's more than enough room in this garage to build out my dream office. The only problem is stuff. We have way too much stuff, it's in the way, and so this video is not about building my office, this video is about getting ready to build my office by building a storage room. That way all my stuff is centralized, organized, and dust free. With the back wall clear, I could start working on the framing. And in order to do that, I have to set up shop in this room. I've completely filled my shop up with all of the stuff that was in this room so that I have room to work. So I just grabbed my job site set up to cut down these two by fours. The plan is to span these two walls with a new wall that's gonna have a doorway in the middle of it. And in order to attach to this outside wall, I've got a conduit in the way. So I just took a couple of the scrap off cuts from cutting these two by fours down to size and I nailed them in around that conduit. When the drywall goes in, I'll just cut a notch around the conduit and it'll be seamless. With that outer stud made, I can start laying out the rest of the studs for the wall. I've got the top and bottom plates right here, which are gonna be the width all the way to the door. And then I lay out each individual stud, making sure to separate them by 16 inches on center. After that, I can spread apart the plates, insert the studs and nail them off. The second side of the wall is the same as the first, except for a little bit smaller, and I'm leaving the top plate a little bit long, and I'll show you why in a minute. When designing this room, I was a little concerned about the strength of the ceiling. So I decided to cut down a couple of two by sixes to put against the back wall as structural support. These are gonna act kind of like posts to support that back edge of the ceiling. When framing, I like to rely more on compressive strength than on shear strength. Shear strength is like the strength of a screw from snapping versus compressive strength is when you stack things on top of each other. You can certainly get lag screws that'll hold, but compressive of strength is always going to be more reliable. Wait. I bought the wrong size 2x6. This is a pre-cut stud, so that means that it's three inches shy of where it needs to be. Uh, they do that because you, you put a two by four on top, you put a two by four on the bottom, they're an inch and a half each. That adds up to three inches, and so they pre-cut them for your convenience. The only problem is at the store, it's really hard to tell the difference, and a lot of times they're mislabeled. I didn't bother to measure them, so now I gotta go back to the store and buy a couple more studs.
With the right size 2x6, I can start nailing things together. These are called joists, all these parts that make up the ceiling slash floor. And the ones that go against the wall are the rim joists, and those support all of the floor joists. And then the end joist is what goes on the end. This is all to say that I have to nail on the end joist first because I can't get a nail gun in behind it once it's up and connected to the wall. It's at this point that the room is finally starting to take shape and you can see the reason why I left that top plate long. I wanna be able to connect it to the doorway and I also need to support it, so I'm gonna nail on an extra two by four. On a final check for level, I found out that this rim joist was a little bit out. So I just added in a couple of shims that managed to take care of it. And then I could attach it to the wall. The screws that I use to anchor these joists to the wall are structural screws. And that's important because regular screws have a tendency to be very brittle. So they, they're strong, but they will snap. Anchors like this and like lag bolts, the reason you use those is because they bend rather than snap. To hang the rest of the joists, I'm gonna be using joist hangers. <laughs> These make installing joists super simple and you just kind of bend them into place. I've got each spot marked with a pencil line that I drew earlier and then I can just nail them off. In the spot where there was a seam, I nailed on a four x four hanger and this is gonna allow me to hang two joists in the same spot and just add a bit more strength there. A 4x4 four four is slightly wider than two 2x6s, two so I added in a little spacer, half inch piece of cedar that I had lying around, and then nailed them all together. I also ran around and nailed all the joist hangers into the joists, locking them in place. The last step on the floor slash ceiling is to add a couple more rim joists. These will tie all of the pieces together and I'll end up with a really strong, sturdy construction that I'll be able to walk on and store heavy things on top of. And now that I have a nailing surface, I can also nail the top plate of the wall into those joists. The top of the wall is now anchored, but the bottom is not. So I need to correct that. I plumb up the wall and fortunately there was a stud behind one of the walls so I could screw into that. But to get a little bit more anchoring to the floor, I had to drill into the concrete. I used a concrete bit with a hammer drill setting on my drill and took my time, drilled a deep enough hole to the right size for a tap con screw. These can be a little temperamental. I like to clean out the hole before I drive them in. And I also used a couple of washers so that it didn't bury the head of the screw into the two x four. And with that, the basic framing of the room was done. There's still a lot left to do. I need to build organizers and put the walls on and put the top of the ceiling on, but it started to feel like a real space. As I mentioned before, my shop is a complete mess right now. So I decided to move operations outside. It's, it's springtime here in Seattle. The weather's getting nice. The only downside is that I have allergies. And that brings us to this week's sponsor, which is Picnic Allergy. More than 50 million people in the US suffer from allergies. And for me, it's the crazy amount of tree pollen this time of year that gets my nose itchy and my eyes red. Picnic Allergy makes it easy to get personalized, effective allergy treatment with FDA approved medications, personalized plans, and convenient home delivery. You start by taking a short online quiz made by expert allergists covering your symptoms, treatment history, and medical preferences. Then you receive a personalized pack of treatments. If you need a prescription, they will set up a consultation with a picnic doctor. They deliver the treatment directly to your door on your schedule with the flexibility to adjust the plan anytime. 
Plus, patients receive unlimited access to virtual doctor follow-ups during their treatment. If you need allergy advice and treatment, my viewers get 50% off their first order when they sign up and use the link below. The offer is valid for the first 100 people who click on the link in the description. You take the quiz and the promotion will be automatically applied. They've helped me enjoy working outside a lot more and hopefully they can help you too. Thanks Picnic Allergy, now back to the build. I spent a fair amount of time designing the shelves for this storage room. They're based on a lot of the stuff that we already own and then also some modular bins that are gonna go into the individual shelves. The storage room is gonna be like 90% shelves and I did my best to maximize the usability of the space with the design of, of these different units. The first one is gonna be the largest one and it's gonna span across the entire back wall of the storage room. I designed it so that all of the legs are exactly the same. They're gonna allow for three shelves. In order to make the tops of those shelves, I got a couple of sheets of plywood. The price of plywood right now is pretty insane and I didn't wanna waste any of it in this process. So I decided to divide up the sheets in half and then cut them into thirds and that gave me six shelves per sheet of plywood without any waste. To join the plywood to the two x four legs, I cut out notches at either end. The outside notches were the full depth of a two x four on its side, which is an inch and a half. On the insides, they are gonna overlap, so I could only go half that depth, so three quarters of an inch, which should be plenty as long as I could figure out how to assemble them. Once I figured out that I just had to lay the legs on the floor and then screw them in, it went a lot smoother. With the two outside shelves assembled, I could space them out and then insert the middle board to tie them together. And now you can see how that middle seam works. They tie together on each side. And then I also put toppers on them and those didn't have to be notched at all. Those were just flat sheets of plywood. Now there was one issue that I didn't really think about was that I needed to notch out for those posts that I put in earlier, but that wasn't too hard to do. Notching the shelves into the posts actually helped a lot with the lateral stability of the whole shelf unit. And in fact, if I were to build this freestanding, I probably would have put an X on the back of it. The other thing that I did to strengthen the shelves was glued and nailed in some two by twos underneath each shelf. This is gonna prevent it from bowing over time. Next up was to start building the shelves on the opposite wall. And these are actually gonna to attach to the two by four studs that I put in earlier. All of these shelves are gonna be exactly the same. So I pre-cut all the parts for them ahead of time and then assembled them inside the space. They're held together with a couple of deck screws. These are temporary. They're not gonna be there for strength. It's just enough to hold them together so I can get them on the wall.
the shelves attach by screwing them into the studs. There's two screws on there, so I can screw one in and then use a level to make sure it's nice and level, and then go over to the other side and repeat. I pre-measured out for all of the shelves and then I could just run up the wall and install them. They're measured out for these plastic bins that I already own. And the idea is that each wall should hold 10 bins. There's two on the floor, four shelves, and then you double that on each wall. That means 20 bins, which is a ton of storage. I know these look a little spindly at the moment, but I've got to trick up my sleeve to make them a lot stronger. Earlier I made these plywood triangles and I'm gonna be using them as shelf brackets. I drilled in pocket holes from the back edge and on the top edge, I countersunk a couple of deck screws. Once attached, they add a ton of strength and they also square up the shelves as I go. After that, it's just a matter of laying the plywood pieces on top and screwing them into place. I left the ceiling off while I was working on the shelves because I didn't want it to be too dark in there while I was working. But now it's time to seal it all up. I've got some three quarter inch plywood, the same stuff that I made the shelves out of, and I'm nailing those into the joists. Each joist is on a 24 inch center, so it lines up perfectly for these 48 inch pieces. It's right in the middle of each joist, so it makes it easy to nail off. You'll notice that I made these panels a little bit long. There's like a lip on that top edge and that's so that when I apply the drywall, it's gonna sit underneath that lip and be perfectly flush. And for those of you who are curious what that hole in my wall is, that's a air return for the furnace. Nothing too exciting. Once this is all done, I'll put a filter over the top of it. Something that is exciting is the lighting that I figured out for this space. I was looking to all sorts of things like recessed cans, all the stuff that was gonna require a bunch of electrical, but this was a perfect solution. These are called construction string lights and they are basically five super bright LEDs on an extension cord, which when I saw them, I was like, this is the perfect solution. It saved me a ton of time wiring them. All I had to do was some cord management, but they already come with carabiners on them. So they hook up to the ceiling. So just a couple screw eyes and some zip ties and these things were ready to go. To complete this kit, I found a remote switch, which has a receiver that plugs into the wall and a switch that you can mount anywhere to turn the lights on and off. <laughs> That's really nice. Oh, so easy. Awesome. One final organizer I decided to add in was a coat rack. We have a whole bunch of outdoor gear that we want to go in here and having a place to hang all of our winter coats is gonna be really nice. It was at this point that I was starting to get pretty impatient with uh, the amount of clutter around the shop and also I just wanted to see if everything was gonna fit. I also took the time to reorganize a lot of stuff. I wanted to make sure each bin was sort of a category. So all my electrical stuff, plumbing stuff, drywall and drop cloths, all those things are in separate bins and now they're easy to access at any moment. I also found that all of our outdoor gear surprisingly just fit into this one little corner with plenty of room to spare. The extra long center shelf allowed room for our pop tent as well as my chop saw stand. And the upper shelves were designed to hold all of my artwork while they're in storage. Don't worry, all this stuff isn't gonna remain here. Some of it's slated for shows in the future and other pieces will end up in my office after I finish building it. 
obviously the room is still not finished. Uh, I got a little excited by putting things in, but I still need to drywall it. I'm just using 5 8 fire code uh, drywall. I decided for drywall because I am I use this space as a metal shop, and it's really nice to uh, know that it's not going to light on fire. I'm not an expert at drywall. I've done it quite a bit, mostly just for my own purposes, um, but I, I, I'm not gonna go into too much of a tutorial on this. Uh, drywalling is an art form. Some people are very good at it. I'm probably more in the mediocre category, but I can get the job done. Basically, I'm just screwing them into the, the blocking behind, and then I'm gonna mud them. I like the pre-mixed mud, and, uh, and then I use paper tape. I, I really don't like the fiber tape. So uh, paper tape, I like to dip it in water beforehand, squeeze it out with my fingers, and then lay it on top of a pre-mudded joint. And then I let that dry, and then I'll go over and mud the top of the paper later. It usually takes about uh, three muddings, and then I'll sand back to get a nice flat wall. After that, I could add some trim detail. Uh, this is just going to cover up that edge between the the drywall and the plywood. These are just some MDF uh, toe kicks that I had left over from an old kitchen project, and they were in the way, so it seemed like a perfect time to use them. To finish off the wall, I painted it with a few coats of primer and a coat of latex paint. For the door, I went with a pre-hung interior holocord door. These are nice and cheap, and they're not too hard to install. If you'd like to know more about door installation in more detail, I have one of the parts of my shed build, build series is devoted to installing doors and windows, and it's a good deep dive into how to do it, actually how to frame it yourself, and, uh, and good practices when it comes to installing them. I then went and added a couple of pieces of that MDF around the door as trim, just to make it look a bit more finished. To finish things off, I added a coat of paint to the door and installed the remote light switch. Take you for a tour. I am so thrilled with how this came out and just the fact that I could fit so much stuff in here. This is like essentially two whole rooms worth of stuff inside of a tiny space. It's incredibly usable. The fact that I have a space for all of my like plumbing and electrical and tile and stuff that just kind of got in the way and didn't have any central location. It's here in clear plastic bins so I could find all of it super quickly. Uh, there's plenty of room to expand. Like I said, a lot of my artwork is going to end up going away or going into the office. Access to all of the outdoor gear, which took up an entire wall in the, in the office space. And now it's just this one little corner. Also, I've got loads of space above, which I could spend a little more time organizing up there, but um, I'll do that another day. Uh, I got a lot of questions on Instagram about the height of this. Uh, I made it this height because it makes standing height above a lot easier. Everything kind of fit in this height, and um, I like the idea that I can just like grab a box and, and slide it up here when I need to. As cool as this space is, the best part of it is actually in the other room. How amazing is this? This space, if you remember from the beginning of the video, was just packed with stuff. And all the stuff that's still here is stuff that's gonna go into the office. And I cannot wait to get started in on the office. That's gonna be the next video. Sneak preview, since you stuck around at the end of this video, I got a Glowforge, which I'm so excited about. I've been wanting one of these since they first came out and uh, I now have one. I cannot wait to set it up. So I'm gonna get started right away on the office and big thank you to Pictic Allergy for sponsoring this video. Big thank you to my Patreon supporters. As always, you guys are the best and I'll catch you in the next one.